Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are having a fantastic time with all that's going on. And uh, it's going to be a good day. It is. Well, I'm glad you're tuning in. It means a lot to not just myself, but I'm sure to hopefully God. <laughs> I could do the best job that I can. And, um, you know, just live an eternity with the Lord. And uh, know the meaning of life. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for today. I thank you for my family. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you that we can't earn your love. We can't earn your salvation, Father, that it's a gift from God, from you. <laughs> um. I pray that you would use these lips to not only convict myself, but to convict our listeners and that they would hear from you and I would hear from you. Thank you so much for all that you do and that you provide. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgive me, I'm a little cold today. So our subject today is contempt. You ever heard of that word? Some of you have, some of you haven't, maybe in a, in a while. It's been a while. Uh, the word contempt, it means to basically not care, to be told something and to not have regard for it or disrespect. Um, if you're ever a, uh, attended court or watched any court channels, you would see these shows. You would see uh, the judge holding the, the person in contempt, which is basically in a heated discussion where they have disregard for anyone around them and they're basically mocking uh, the law or mocking what a person, you know, we hold people in contempt. We hold God in contempt. Um, when people, when we don't respect people's boundaries, they tell us multiple, multiple times, like, please don't do this. Uh, this hurts my feelings or I don't appreciate that. And we hold this, we hold them and we don't care. And we do it again over and over and over and over and over again. Not of, out of uh, unawareness, like, oh, I'm sorry, like I, I'm going to try to get better. But if you're not trying to get better, um, about it. You're not trying to, you know, accept the correction. You're not trying to make a, a, a difference and, and you're just speaking it, but you're not making a difference or you're just mocking it, then that's holding it in contempt. We, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a courtroom environment. It can be with our spouse. You know, if your spouse is telling you to do something and you say, yeah, I'll do it, or, or you, you don't do it, that's holding that person in contempt. That's basically taking this person's grace for granted. Their undeserved, your, their undeserved mercy for you, you know? And we do this, human beings do this a lot. You know, we take our jobs for granted. We take our spouses for granted. We take God for granted. Of course, priority. We take him for granted. We take our kids for granted. We take everything in America that we've been given for granted, our laws and our statues and stuff, uh, we can take anything for granted. And, and this is a thing that God um, dislikes. It's a sin. You know, we mock at it. There's a just blatant uh, rebellion towards making a change in that area of your life to uh, appease to somebody. And, uh, and not appease to sin, there's obvious right and wrong, but a piece to 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 uh, to reconcile that relationship with that person, or um, 
whomever it is or whatever the given situation is. So a lot of people, you hear this term, that's just your opinion and you have your opinion, I have my opinion. And with that being said, that, that, that doesn't, that's not true, by the way. We can have our opinion on certain things, such as preference, but when it comes down to uh, the law, the law of the government, the law of marriage, the law of God, uh, those things can't, are not negotiable. So we have to learn how to discern what is my personal preference. Like I like sugar in my coffee, which this person doesn't, or this person doesn't like coffee. Does that mean we should hate each other? Absolutely not. And then the world that we live in is a non-Christian world. We're surrounded by the secular mindset, which is to say, if you don't agree with me, you're completely wrong and I hate you. You know, I disagree with my spouse all the time. I disagree with some of the employees or employers I've worked with. I've disagreed with various kinds of people, even our government and so on and so forth. But I don't or should not hate them for that. And the problem with this immature mindset is I'm going to hate you until I get what I want. I'm going to hold you in contempt to show you that you're wrong and I'm right. And God doesn't want his people to live this way. And if you're thinking about becoming a Christian or you are a Christian, God doesn't want you to live this way, to hold people in contempt. Like, I'm not going to acknowledge you anymore. You're no longer worthy. You are beneath me. I am better than you because of whatever reason. And Jesus says we ought to love our enemies. We ought to love everybody. And I am very guilty of this. I'm very guilty of holding people in contempt, thinking people below me, thinking I'm above the law, thinking I'm above this job, thinking I'm above my spouse or my opinions more validated than you. And this is completely wrong. It's completely arrogant. It's completely prideful. And when we don't get our way, there are two different that I've known of reactions. There are people who hold people in contempt and they don't say anything or they try to ignore the person. And there are people who get uh, overly loud and aggressive, which is my character. My wife is the opposite. She gets quiet and she stonewalls you, which is closes you off and makes you feel bad. And whereas I, I am aggressor and I get louder and more hostile. Um, there's only those two in marriages and there's always those only those two in relationships. And we have to understand which category we fall in so we can um, dissect all of those bad qualities so we can get those bad qualities out and we can make a change. Whether you're a stonewaller or whether, uh, and you block people off when you don't get your way, you shut them out, you completely ignore them, you avoid them at all costs, or whether you're uh, like me, an aggressor, you get louder, you talk more, you get more angry. Um, Whatever category you fall under, you need to learn, you need to look at your own heart and you need to discern, like, how can I make, how can I be a better person? How can I not do this? What are my triggers when this person says or people do certain things? And, and how do I uh, learn how to better myself in this area? Because one of the things is for certain, whichever category that you fall under, is God put us on, on this earth to, to be glorified and in a uh, to be thanked for his creation and to love him and to love others. And if we don't know how to have relationships with one another, uh, we have this sort of what I would call this passivity, uh, passiveness. Uh, if you don't know what pa pa to be passive, it means to basically kind of ignore it, which is good to ignore it. There, that, that heeds discernment to ignore it. But when, when you ignore it to the point where uh, you act like it's not a problem, that creates an even worse problem because the problem never gets dealt with because you're always sh like overlooking the sin so much to the point where uh, it, it can cause division in wherever body or home or even individual or relationships between each other. And every time you see or every time you do something, a part of someone's life that is not being dealt with, uh, God will constantly bring this up.
it'll constantly come up in your life with when you have relationships with others like why do people always do this is it something that you do or um why do people always say this about you? Why are people always treating you this way? Is it, is it something that they're doing? You know, and Jesus talks about how the body of Christ should be operating as one, you know, have the same mind and heart and intentions. And uh, we ought to learn. He doesn't want his uh, stewards or his servants or his followers or disciples or whatever evangelists um, to live unwise. He wants us to live um, like he lived. He wants us to be wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. The world that we live in is a contemptuous place with lots of contempt. It's either their way or the highway. It's either their opinion or no one's opinion. And this is complete straight from hell. There's no correction. There's no uh, enlightenment. There's no awareness because you're trying to teach someone something new. Both categories fall under that same thing. It doesn't matter. It's still pride. And God doesn't like pride. and He despises it. I'm going to give you an example. So basically, I was completely against reading anything that wasn't the Bible when I first got saved. And I'm not going to go into my past before I got saved. But in this state... Uh, I thought I was right. I always believed I was right. I always thought that there was no other way. I was completely right. I know it because I've experienced it or whatever my excuse was, even if it was a valid one in my own eyes, which the Bible says they're right in their own eyes. And then I was like, I'm not reading any other book. And then I started to question the Bible. And I said, well, it was written by man, but it was inspired by God. Um, but sinners wrote it. It was a, all the people who, were, who, who wrote the Bible were sinners, just like you and me. And it was preserved over the course of 2,000 plus years, and probably even orally longer than that, which orally means out of your mouth, gossip and stuff, you know, and witnesses. Uh, so, and I'm putting my trust in all these people who've preserved it, and who've written it, and who've translated into multiple uh, um languages and and contemporized it over and over and over again even the the gentlemen or the people who've who've ministered to me and fed into my life i've been taught everything that i know regardless of the bible take the bible completely out everything you know has been taught to you everything how you treat people how you love yourself what you think about yourself what what, what you think about others uh, um, everything around you how you perceive the world every single thing that you are seeing and experiencing and you know has been taught to you how did you learn how to walk how did you learn how to talk how did you learn how to read how did you learn how to write how did you learn how to discern how did you learn how to think it was all taught to you all of it and Jesus brings up this mindset where he says, you need, to, you need to basically die to yourself, die to your thoughts in a sense of you need to, you need to know that your thinking is only the, the beginning of something newer. And he's, he's basically bringing on the Pharisees. They don't want to learn that, that they think they're right in their own eyes. They're like children. Uh, I remember working at a school and these kids, the kids are amazing and not all of them were this way, but there were a lot of kids. There were not a lot. I'm sorry. There were some kids and the, and I'm sure this is how their household was. They thought they were right about everything. I'm, I'm a grown man. This child is in first grade. I'm kind of like, dude, like, come on. And he's like, I know everything. And you couldn't teach him nothing. You couldn't teach him nothing because he was smarter than everyone. And this is what Jesus is saying. You would die in your sins, not just because of the blood will wash you of your sins, but you will die in your perspective of what you think you understand when you have not the faintest idea. A lot of people don't even understand religion. They don't even understand our faith. They don't even read their Bible. They don't even know what we believe in and, and who Jesus is and anything. But they make accusations or they make opinions and they say all these ignorant things, which is basically, I don't really know. So I'm just going to take the best guess that I know because I am prideful and I know I'm probably am wrong and, and 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 they make this not just the conclusion about that about religion they make this conclusion about everything i heard this perfect analogy yesterday i'm gonna try not to butcher it which was basically this it was basically 
I never, I don't like math. And let's say I never studied math, right? Or, and, and, in, in, and I go to a mathematical institute and I start telling the professors what to do and saying, you don't know how to do math. And they've been studying this craft day in and day out for, for years, decades. And it's been studies over the generations of things. Like generations and generations um, uh, before Einstein, all these people, and they've read their books. And, they're, and they're, they're, the Institute of, of Mathematics is just growing beyond measure. And they're finding things that they haven't even understood. And I'm telling them that 2 plus 2 is not 4. It's whatever you want it to be. And they're like, no, it's not. We've been studying mathematics for a long time. You see, and the same thing applies for the Bible and for basically any form of study that you get into. People have spent their entire life dedicating to this craft or dedicating to the studies of certain things that God has given us to study his nature, to study the things around us and each other. They're saying, I know you better than you know yourself. And, and you just met the person or, or you've only had a relationship uh, with this person for, let's just say, 365 days out of 20 years. And out of those hours, probably only a thousand hours you spent with them. You get what I'm saying? So basically, don't judge a book by its cover, you know. And people who do the most judgmental or very judgmental, which is all of us, some more than others. But the cure to judgmentalism is through knowledge. The more you learn, the less you judge because you realize when you read your first book or second or third or you get really enthused about reading or learning something that you don't know, you realize you gain a better perspective and you go, wow, I thought I knew everything about filmmaking. I thought I knew everything that, uh, uh, about this or that or this. And I'm just realizing that there's just so many perspectives and so many different ways to look at the same thing. There's so many different ways to look at the same Bible. And given that there are obvious truths, there are truths that we're still learning. The moment that you die is the moment that you stop learning, someone once said. And that basically means the people who think they know it all. People who think they know it all, that they're dead because you can't teach them anything. And this is where we get basically what I believe is where we get bad marriages. We get bad, bad uh, school districts. We get bad government. We get bad, I mean, everything, family, uh, uh, whatever, wherever you work, because the people have set in their minds that they know everything about the job. Even what the problem is, even the, uh, the leaders of, of our country, um, they don't listen to anyone. They don't give them the time of day to kind of go, you know, let, what's your opinion on this situation? What's your opinion? God doesn't need to do that, but we need to do that. We're all, we should always be willing to learn whether it's someone above you or older than you or someone beneath you. I'm learning from my kids. When I look at my kids, I go, wow, my gosh, who thinks of that? You know, a lot of things are, are just <laughs> like, doesn't make sense. And it's probably not good because I'm the parent, but there are things that are completely good. And I'm like, wow, that's so smart. That's so amazing. So the, the contemptuous attitude has to be uh, pride and it has to be made. I think it has to be people feeling like they're not heard. They're not heard. So they feel like they shut each other out in, in whatever way they were, they get aggressive or whether they get, uh, they, 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 they close off. And it's their way of saying, I got you, I'm right. And then we go and, and we, and our relationships in this world are very back and forth, back and forth, where it's just all about spiting each other or trying to one up each other. And this is not how God designed creation. It's sin. And, and this is not how he wants his, the body of Christ. So I'm going to, I believe I'm going to end just because I think I'm going to time. Oh, got a little bit. I'm going to try to come up with one big last illustration, analogy, or metaphor to give you a picture. How do you avoid that? 
Jesus loves, God loves a humble heart. Jesus is God made in the image of God, like all of us, but Jesus is actually God. And he humbled himself. He emptied himself every day of his life. And not just to serve everyone else and only think about other people, but to... Um, but to but to as a child you could see he was always he was always under a teacher he was always learning and he was always allowing new perspectives and ideas to come into his mind and that's how we ought to be we ought to allow new perspectives to come into our mind um i used to think a lot of negative things about myself and i and i was fed with those things you know uh, wherever it came from, or just my own thoughts, doesn't matter, no fingers to be pointed, because we all do this, and this has all happened to all of us, but I used to believe a lot of lies, terrible things, things about my face, things about who I am, things about uh, what I'm going to become, like just, just, just nasty things, but if you've ever been in an elementary school, and I say elementary school, or just even high school, actually any school, right, or even alive, but I'm, I bring up elementary school to show you a perspective. The perspective is this. I've worked in an elementary school, and kids are mean. They're blatantly mean. But just because kids are open and honest about how they feel does not necessarily mean that people are, aren't still that way today. But it's, it's, it's uh, passive. It's like, I don't like you, but instead of just telling you like a child would tell you, I don't like you, and I don't condone that either. But instead of telling the person that you don't like them, they'll just they'll just either do two different things. They'll they're you know spread a bunch of rumors about you, or you know they'll 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 try to get your attention in some way, or completely avoid you and completely hold you in contempt, uh, which is like you're not worthy of my attention. You completely, and this is just not good. <laughs> and. We need to start looking at the action as the sin as Jesus judged us and he judges us on a regular basis. He doesn't hate you. He hates the sin. He doesn't hate me or anyone and we ought to be this way. We shouldn't hate the person. We should dislike their actions. Just like when you look at your kids. If you're an if you're an adult and I mean when I mean an adult, I mean actually I mean someone who has kids. When you're a parent, you got to learn how to hate what the the action and and not hate the child you know and and when you can learn how to do that then you can learn how to make good judgment but i believe personally it starts with being corrected yourself you can't really you even if your judgment is right i mean let's just say let's i'm trying to find a good example for this one uh, don't judge people. That's a whole different topic, but <laughs> of a, of what my mind is wandering off to. Don't 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 judge people, or whereas don't judge people. You know, like really figuring out a way of how to communicate. In other words, you can speak the same truth. But your manner, your demeanor, your, the way you present your judgment or your criticism, if it, if it is, if in your heart it's not, if you want to, at the end, what's your goal? You have to ask yourself when you're making a judgment towards others, what's your goal? Where is your heart at? Is your goal to help them in your heart? Like, do you, like, do you make a judgment to say, I want to try to help you? Or are you making a judgment to go, I want to see you in pain? And Jesus says, watch out for that, the intention in your heart, because what a man sows, that shall he also reap. So we need to really analyze our intentions, you know. What is our intention? Because what you put out is what you're going to get back. Whether this person rebukes you, walks away from you, or whether they start fighting with you, you're going to get hostility everywhere you go. 
even if it's silent, passive hostility, people are really good at this. I can do, we all do it. It's not acceptable. We need to stop it. So they're like, I hope you have a nice day, but don't really mean it. You get what I'm saying? Like, actually they do mean it, but they don't, it's disguised. And, and when we text each other, we email each other or whatever interaction we have, we, we don't really check our motives, you know? And I believe contempt is breeded all upon, I'm going to put you below me so you can be in pain because I'm better than you. Basically, contempt is are a bunch of people who think they're better than other people. And I struggle with this on a regular basis. It's a prideful, nasty thing. It destroys everything. We need to figure out a way, learn about ourselves, to be able to communicate to one another in a way that to not be offended where aggression comes out because aggression still comes out whether you close off or whether you get more violent and loud we need to figure out a way to communicate without becoming hostile and this is what's supposed to separate the christian the christians the true christians is the world argues over their opinion they fight over it they war they cause war, whether it's physical or gossip or whatever have you, with one another. They won't talk to each other. They'll completely avoid each other. Like I can, whereas us Christians, we can say, you know what? I can. I disagree with you. It's okay. It's okay to disagree. I love you still, but I disagree with this. You know. And this sinful nature is basically carnival, carnivalistic. If you guys ever seen the movie we watched yesterday with my kids, uh, Zootopia. Anyways, this animal, they're returning to their animal instincts. And that's not how God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be these animals. He doesn't want us to live like an animal. Like, oh, my opinion, my way or the highway. Everyone's wrong. I'm right. You know, he wants us to educate ourselves through his word, through the things around us, through study, through questions, you know, and to be like a child. Children ask, ask so many questions, it drives me insane. But we need to be like these children, not despise their questions. We need to become like them again. Jesus says, unless you become like a child, most children, unless you're raised in a terrible household, and that's the only exception. Children are usually raised in a terrible household are usually, like I described to you, that kid. There were, there were here and there a lot of them uh, who just, you couldn't teach them nothing. But most of the other kids, they wanted to learn. They wanted to learn. They wanted to get it. And God wants us to learn, and he wants us to get it because he loves us. And he gets so excited about that. So this basically ends my topic on contempt i was studying some other things and sermons that i had written um but this one just got me because god convicted me like crazy and exposed me for who i was and i was like i had nothing to say i just and he said you you need to repent you need to say i'm sorry and i was like oh shoot you got me you got me <laughs> I'm totally arrogant. I'm totally prideful. I totally hold everything in contempt. I think I'm better than my Christian friends. Or well, obviously they're not my friends if I think about them this way. But I think I'm better than people and I think I'm better than everyone and I think I'm above the law. I think I'm above this. And God is like, this is the thing that I despise the most. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So if you're like me and you find yourself in c treating people with contempt, then I'd advise you to repent. Repent. Say, I'm sorry. And allow God to teach you. Be a child in his presence, constantly learning. Your mistakes and your past 
And what people say about you don't define you. They don't define you. Those were just little things. You didn't know better. And even if you did, people make mistakes. Mis we're not perfect. God doesn't expect Christians or anyone to be perfect. He expects us to make progression. He expects us to grow, to want to learn. He expects us to want to be the best, better self, better than I was yesterday. Not be comparing myself between anyone else, but to be better. He wants us to pursue him to be better. He's like, I want you to be better. I want you to be better. I want you to be better, better. Some days I wake up and I look back and I get convicted and I look at all my other sermons and I look at all the other actions and how I treated people, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I left the I left the train wreck of my past. And I'm like, I've been so rude and mean to a lot of people, and I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that's okay. We all do it, but are we learning from our mistakes? That's the key. That's the grace. In the Old Testament, you were killed. They were done. You're over. One mistake, boom. And then Jesus comes and he says, you guys all make this mistake. But I'll forgive you instead of let you get killed. And then you can actually start making change. I may mess up a thousand times. But one of those times, eventually, thousand, ten thousand, I'm going to get it right. So there's lots of things to learn from. There are lots of things to become better. And I advise you, last thing I'll close on is, if you don't attempt to make a change, God will change something in your life where you will be forced to make a change. So with all being said, God loves you. I am trying my best to love you and love myself and love God. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your grace that when we mess up, that we can try again and again and again and again and again. Because your love is forever. And you give us that chance again and again and again to try over and over and over again. Forgive us of our sins against others. Help us forgive them for their sins that they were messing up too, just like us. And help us accept correction and help us uh, learn without getting mad or hostile or being contemptuous. But let us be humble and teachable and loving and patient and holy like you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.